What is a toe biter? Find out in this episode of Bug of the Week. Welcome to Bug of the Week Part 5, and um, if you're new to the channel, like I always say, consider subscribing and dropping a like, and leave, leaving a comment of uh, some of your favorite, uh, maybe a new favorite fact that you learned about from this episode, along with any other questions that you might have for me. Um, so yeah, if you're new here, consider subscribing, and without further ado, let's just hop right into this. Meet family Bellastomatidae within the order of Hemiptera, or True Bugs. True bugs are mostly characterized by their wing structure and their sucking mouth parts called stylets, which they use to pierce and slurp their food. Bellistomatidae are a family within Hemiptera comprising of about 170 species found in freshwater habitats worldwide, though most species, about 110 of them, are found in the Neotropics. This family is known as giant water bugs, alligator ticks, or toe biters. Toe biters are actually the largest of the hemipterans found to measure about four and a half inches in length. These bugs are equipped with large compound eyes, taking up about 75% of their head space. Toe biters possess the unique ability to traverse fresh water, land, and the air using their wings. Although they aren't exactly the most adept at flying, they are typically found swimming in the water. Like I said, they are often found in freshwater streams and ponds, hiding amongst the vegetation or in the mud. Like I mentioned in a previous episode, insects are equipped with a combination of a tracheal system and spiracles to breathe. Um, they do not have lungs or gills. So giant water bugs can spend several hours at a time underwater, but they do need to breathe still, so how do they do it? They actually use a combination of two things. When they go up to the surface for air, they stick a snorkel-like appendage that they have out of the water to breathe in the air. Then they create an air bubble underneath their wings, which they store and use to breathe while they're underwater. The hind four legs of the giant water bug are somewhat paddle-shaped and equipped with hairs, which they use to scoop the water more efficiently. The front pair of legs are modified raptorial appendages that they use to catch their live prey, much like that of a praying mantis. The giant water bug mainly feeds on small tadpoles, fish, and aquatic insect larvae, although they have been observed to, to feed on small frogs, rodents, and even turtles. Using their raptorial legs, they grasp their prey, and using their stylet, inject a digestive enzyme into their prey, liquefying their insides. The giant water bug then slurps up the insides of the prey, just like a smoothie. The colloquial name of toe biters is due to their very painful bite. And although natural bites from these bugs are quite rare in the wild, people have said it is very painful, as the digestive enzymes create um, that are injected create a very annoying irritation around the bite site. Now, something that's super cool about these bugs and most hemipterans is their unique behaviors around raising their young. After the male and females mate, the female lays the eggs on the male's back. And after the course of about two weeks, the eggs develop on the back of the male while the male protects the eggs for this time. One by one, the eggs hatch from the back of the male as baby nymphs and begin swimming. Once every few weeks, the babies climb to land to molt, doing this four to five times before adulthood. And they're, like I mentioned, they're born as nymphs. So uh, I think I've explained this before, but um, them being bugs, they have something called an incomplete life cycle, meaning they're born as nymphs, go through a series of instars or molts, as opposed to being born as a larvae and metamorphosizing into an adult. So they're a little bit different in that sense because, you know, they're born as nymphs, they leave water to molt, and then eventually they're an adult. Anyway, these bugs are really cool. They're definitely one of my favorites, and they're actually native to my area in Washington State. Um, so I found a few of them. I actually have a few of them in my um, insect collection, so this is some footage from that. You can see my specimen, but um, they're super crazy. It's super cool that they can go from water to land and to air, and they can fly. Um, it's just super bizarre. They're super weird looking, super big and strong and intimidating. But nonetheless, if you enjoyed this episode, please consider dropping a subscribe and a like. 
And I will see you all next week and keep on bugging. Thank you.